focused on a lot in the offseason, we've been able to stop the run. I think stopping the run has created an opportunity for us to be in um, advantageous third downs. Now we've got to be able to get off the field on those third downs and be able to create some field position flip for the offense. Um, offensively, um, we're spinning our feet in the mud a little bit um, because of the things that we prevented the first two weeks are showing up in these last two weeks, um, sacks, turnovers, penalties. Um, the first two weeks we were able to pre prevent them uh, or minimize them. Um, in the last two weeks they've shown up. And then when you get in those situations to where you're not able to be ahead of the sticks on first and second down, it magnifies your issues that you have on third down. Um, and then as the opponents get better, they know your issues, so now they're able to attack your issues in the areas where you're, where you're struggling a little bit. Um, we talked about uh, Marshall beaters um, the, the last couple of weeks. So we went back. Um, week one, we had eight. Week two, we had 11. Week three, we had 21. Week four, we had 21. So you take penalties, sacks, turnovers, missed tackles. Anything that the defense gets, you subtract. Anything the offense gets, you add. So first couple of weeks, we were very close to being in the negative. You know, we get back first week, we had eight, okay, which is, okay, good, 11. Well, they say, well, coach, what's the number? Well, it ain't 21, okay? I do know that, okay? So when you really start looking, because our defense did some good things. They got some turnovers. They got some sacks. Well, then we gave up some sacks and some turnovers. So that balance is out. Um, and I think as you look at them, you know, there's been some – that have been probably double costly for us in the last couple of weeks, meaning taking points completely off the board or putting them completely on. Um, on the flip side, the first couple of weeks, we were able to put points on the board. You know, Micah, I mean, uh, uh, Gilmore gets a pick and scores. You know, this week we give up a strip sack and they score. You know, so I think when you talk about the mistakes, obviously the magnitude of the mistake helps um, kind of paint the picture a little bit. Um, but what we've got to do is we've got to get back to playing winning football. And that, that's really what it is. It doesn't matter who we're playing. It doesn't matter where we're playing. We've got to get back to taking care of the football on offense. We've got to get back to being uh, manageable third down so we can manage the game wisely. Um, we've been able to run the ball pretty consistently. I think that's why we've been in all of these games from a score perspective, which is a positive, um, to know that we can run the ball against some of these good fronts that we've been going against. Um, but we got to get back to winning football, and that's in all three phases. And that's just not offense, defense, um, that's special teams. We got to get back to that complementary winning football. Coach, going off of that, I mean, 21 Marshall beaters and back to back weeks. How do you address that, and what do you change to help, you know, fix that? Well, the first thing you do is you change the people that are creating them. Um, then the second thing you do, you look and see if the people you're replacing them with are better. And if they're not, you got to put those people back in there and keep coaching them. That's really where, you know, some of these issues are coming up. The other part of it is we've got to kind of manage what we do to put guys in the situations, right? So if we're having issues protecting, you know, against pressure and different looks or different rushers, we've got to create a longer edge. We've got to get the ball out quicker. Or we've got to do something to, to – to, neutralize the, the issues that we have, whether that's, hey, the, the tackles have an issue or the guards have an issue or, hey, on third down they're bringing this type of pressure, that's an issue. So until you can replace the person with a better person or a different person in those situations, you've got to be able to manage the situation with the play call or the formation or, you know, hey, we really like to do this play, but this play is not protected, so we can't do that play which is going to create some issues because now you're not able to truly be the offense or defense you want to be. Same thing on defense. We had 14 missed tackles Saturday, eight by the secondary. Well, part of it is we're, we're short a guy in the secondary with Isaiah Norman being out right now. Um, hopefully get him back soon. So now you're playing different guys. You know, So do those guys have the responsibility to make a tackle? Yes. Obviously, it helps when you have your better players in there to try to you know, negate some of that. So it's a combination. Um, it's a combination of developing the back half of your roster so that as the season goes and the other guys do have to play, they have the experience. Um, it's developing the guys that are in there so we can run the plays on both sides of the ball that give us the best opportunity while being protected. Um, so it's a combination. It's a lot. You know, I would say – when I had Saquon Barkley and Miles Sanders, if Saquon fumbled, I put Miles in. Well, both of those guys are draft picks, so it's easy. 
Well, when LeBorn fumbled, the, the guys that went in behind him are just younger. You know, so he still gave us the best chance to win. But we've got to decide, do you let the guy keep fumbling or do you put in somebody who's younger, maybe doesn't have the experience? So as a coach, you kind of find that balance. Um, I don't think any of our players go out there with the, uh, with the thought of, I'm going to mess up or I'm going to fumble or I'm going to give up a sack or miss a tackle. Um, but we just got to make sure we're putting the best guys in position to do what they can do best. You mentioned LeBorn. He had 118 yards with a 174 total offense. Did you guys go into that game with that as a game plan, like, hey, we'll just get him the ball, or what was kind of your game plan? No, I mean, we, we always want to run the ball. Um, and, and he probably gives us the best chance right now running the ball. Um, you know, he's able to break some tackles. He's able to kind of, you know, body and balance control to stay up on some runs. He runs tough. He runs physical. Um, so he gives us the best chance to run it effectively. Um, as the game went on and we realized, okay, we're having protection issues, well, in order to stay out of these protection issues, we got to get to third and manageable or we got to get the first down. Because if we get into a situation where it's third and 17 or third and 15, well, that's not advantageous to anybody. So as the game went on, we realized, hey, the defense is doing a good job of kind of keeping us in this thing. So let's try and run the ball to be more efficient until we can get to a position where we can open it up and throw it a little bit more, um, you know, as we got in different situations. You mentioned some of the issues in, in past defense, um, giving up 300 plus yards. You know, does that have anything to do with the aggressiveness at the line of scrimmage, kind of being able to come in and stop and run? Does that open things up on the back end for, for opposing offenses? No, I think what it, all, what it does a little bit, um, if you're a DB and you play behind our D-line, <coughs> you, you expect either the quarterback or the ball carrier to get on the ground fast. So if you're covering your guy for longer than four or five seconds, it's kind of like, hey, where's the ball? Bang, there it goes. It, it, you know what I mean, type of deal. So I think a little bit of our dominance right now in the D-line creates a little bit of inconsistency in with our guys in the back end. I think also teams understand that we're stopping the run pretty good right now, knock on wood. Um, so they're a little more creative in their pass game. You know, hey, how can we pick, rub, you know, cross a guy quick, get him the ball, puts us in a little different position. I'm playing, you know, seven, eight yards off the guy. He takes off that way fast, gets the ball to him. You know what I mean? So I think, again, our um, ability to be dominant and consistent up front so far this season has created teams to say, okay, well, hey, there's no need us beating our head against the wall trying to do X, Y, and Z, but we can do this and try and create an advantage to get this guy running away or get this guy down, you know, in a zone, if that makes sense. Coach, with your uh, O line, has it has it been tough on with the the whole coaching thing, distraction, or is it just getting used to a new voice coaching them up? Or has that been a factor the last couple of weeks? I don't think it's been a factor. Um, I mean, that could be an easy excuse. Um, we we had these issues in August. We've just been able to manage them, if that makes sense. You know, you know what I mean? It's just been something that, if you look back, we gave up a sack in the Norfolk game. Nobody really knows because we were able to score a bunch of points. We gave up a sack in the in Notre Dame game. We didn't drop back as much in that game because going into the game, we already knew, okay, their front is probably going to be a little more aggressive. So the issues that we have are not new issues. So it's not a coaching change or it's not a, you know, hey, well, this, well, Bill Legg's teaching different than, than somebody else. It's issues that we've been able to stay out of these situations. You know, we haven't had very many third and plus sixes up until the last two weeks. Well, now we've started, they're starting to show up a little more. We haven't been in a situation where we've needed to come from behind in the last couple of weeks. You know, we put a drive together um, a couple of weeks ago, and it was mostly run. You know, LeBorn comes out of there and gets a 40-yard, you know, 50-yard run. That changes the whole dynamic. We haven't had that in the last couple of weeks. You know what I mean? So now as you're moving the ball down the field, well, you may get in third and eight. Okay, well, here are issues come. How can we protect our issues and still get enough guys out in pass routes to be able to get eight yards? You know, so issues that we've had um, that we've been able to mask um, and now they're showing up. We've got to get back to, one, creating new ways to mask them, um, and then, two, playing winning football, not turning it over, being efficient on first down, taking care of the ball when we do run it, being more efficient with RPOs, you know, the first play of – or second play of, you know, Bowling Green, we hit an RPO, which is a way to mass 
the pass. We're going to run it. We're going to throw it. So just things that we've been able to do, we got to continue to do better. And things that we've known have been issues, we got to continue to create new ways to change the issues or mask the issues so we can keep moving forward. Uh, yeah, he's kind of doing both. Uh, right now we've got, um, you know, Dalton Williams, who's, a, who's an analyst for us, who's, you know, tight ends are they're not easy to coach, but they're either connected to the O-line in the run or they're connected to the wide receivers in the pass. So, you know, Dalton's getting them, helping them out with the wide receiver and Coach Bo Knight, and then Coach Legs got them in the run where, you know, usually they're connected to either one of those groups or the quarterbacks with Coach Trickett. Coach, I saw you mention yesterday uh, with Sunbelt, you know, the Sunbelt Conference that this is an uncharted territory for you guys. You started last season up 2-0, dropped two games. So how much are you guys kind of leaning on that experience from last year, or is this completely a new page and you're telling the guys, like, hey, you know, we got a big home game this week? Like, how much, I guess, do you lean on that experience? No, I, I think you got to lean on your experiences because that's what the kids know. Uh, I know we've got 48 new guys, but we still got 50 or 60 old guys, you know, um, that, that, that know and understand the ebbs and flows. And, and I use it more for not, hey, this is how we play or we should always go to and then, you know, lose to. I use it more for managing, you know, the expectations because the expectation is because you won one game that was big, you're supposed to win them all. Well, no. It's not true. <laughs> or because you lose one game that's supposed to be winnable, that you're going to lose them all. Well, no. Well, you know, they said the same thing last year. We lost one here to ECU that was a big game. We lost uh, a game at Middle Tennessee that we were supposed to win. And then we end up coming back home and we, you know, go to overtime and grind it out with ODU. We win three straight. You know, so, again, I use it to manage – what you guys print <laughs> and say, not what we understand. I use it in-house to understand and say, if we don't play winning football, we're not going to win another game, period. Regardless of whether it's supposed to be a winnable game or not supposed to be a winnable game, whether it's a home or away. But they live in that the world of, of people and family and friends and pats on the back and you know kicks in the rear and, well, you guys should be 4-0. and No, we shouldn't be 4-0. and We should be 2-2. Two and two. Why? Because you are what you are. We are 21, Mar 21 Marshall beaters in two games. We should be two and two. Now, should I be 6'7 and 305 pounds and playing left tackle for the Miami Dolphins? Well, maybe. But I'm not. I'm here with you guys. You're stuck with me. So, we should be two and two. Should we be able to play better? Absolutely. Have we made some mistakes that have cost us? Absolutely. Um, but we should be what we are because what we, the things we did got us to where we are. So using it more as if we don't play winning football, guys, it doesn't matter if the game's big, not big, supposed to win. I did uh, you know, kind of let them know, hey, moving forward in our conference, that's the environment that we're going to play in week in, week out. Uh, regardless of who we play in our conference, that's what the game's going to look like. You know, it's going to be a knockdown, drag out. It's going to be tough defenses. It's going to be tough offenses. We're going to need plays in all three phases um, just so they can get an understanding because a lot of these kids haven't um, had that experience, you know, between last year with App and Lafayette, yes, but not with the whole conference. Um, so we did use that experience. And I guess kind of along the same lines, but just this weekend you had, you know, you guys have – Gardner Webb, you mentioned it's military appreciation night. Did you want to? Yeah, uh, military appreciation um, game. Just again, you know, um, we, we play this game for, for many reasons, but um, anytime we get to honor the men and women um, that serve our country and allow us to play this game freely and to live in this country freely, um, we, we want to take full advantage of that. Um, I know our media team, I mean, excuse me, our marketing team has some things planned. Um, you know, to honor and recognize some, some military from and in and around the area. But just from our players to, to the men and women um, of this country that serve our country, uh, we thank you. We appreciate what you do. It allows us to go to great places and play football games, you know, free of care. It allows us to play here at the Joan free of care. It allows us to go to sleep at night free of care. Um, and a lot of times they don't get the thank you from, you know, from each and every person. So. Um, on behalf of our team, I say thank you to all the men and women that serve our country. So thanks, guys, and go Herb.